Welcome back. You are watching DXB today, and we are tackling all things public speaking and how to overcome our fears. But this is not an episode just for adults, it's also for youth. In fact, our next guest is a distinguished scholar and seasoned coach dedicated to shaping the next generation of debaters by harnessing critical thinking and effective communication. Please welcome the director of the Harvard Debate Council, Dr. Trip Revrovic. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, I'm very happy to be here and to be in Dubai. Very excited. Now, we are all parents here sitting on the couch with you. Why is it important to get started young? Just a Oh, that's a great question. Because you're here in Dubai, that's what you're Absolutely. doing, Yes, right? we're here to teach a debate workshop over the next few days with, uh, with Looking Glass. Um, getting started young is really important. As everything that we do, the more experience you have, the better you're going to be. And there are a number of skills that you can build up starting at a young age, including building your confidence, your ability to present your point persuasively, and what is also really important to me, you learn how to be a better decision maker. Mm. Debate teaches us how to analyze arguments and think about you know, what is the best course of action we should take right now? Uh, Dr. Tripp, I have a six-year-old at home and she needs no tr uh, training when it comes to debating because she debates me almost <laughs> every day. She challenges me on almost everything I tell her. Now, debating definitely hones the ability to critical thinking and analyze complex uh, issues from multiple perspectives. But my question to you is, are these skills invaluable, not just in academics, but also in a professional setup later in life? Oh, absolutely. I think the skills you learn in debate will prepare you to be an effective advocate at any point in your life, whether you're speaking to an audience or whether you're uh, meeting with somebody one-on-one -on -one and you're trying to convince them that what you bring to the table is what they should adopt or what they should agree with. And so um, debate prepares you to be persuasive and to be convincing no matter the setting. Look at those answers. <laughs> <laughs> that that it feels like it's rehearsed, but it's not. <laughs> You're naturally super talented. And you know, debate is a specific type of public speaking. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's important is speed and pace. And the feedback that I often get with clients is, I speak too fast or I speak too slow on both ends. And that's your world there. So do you have any tricks and tips of what they can do? What do you do in the debate world to mitigate that? Well, it's actually fascinating. Before I answer that question, I just want to say the kind of debate that I coach for our undergraduates, they actually speak very quickly. It's one of the unique characteristics. Um, the idea is that the more arguments you can make, the more points your opponent has to respond to. Now, this is a very specific format, and so we don't recommend that general <laughs> public speakers speak at twice conversational speed. So it's, but it's what, 300 words yeah, Three to minute. 400 words per minute are what our undergraduates are usually doing. And we speak we on speak average? About 180 words a minute. Right. So twice, almost three times as fast. But I think the key is, as always, practice. Mm -hmm. Practice, practice, practice. The more you have time to go over your speech, the more you can experiment with different speeds and find the one that works best. And of course, you can always adjust your speech on the fly, go a little faster or slower at key important points you want to emphasize. So Doctor, you are from Harvard. Now that is a, a, a big name for all of, them, <laughs> all of the people out there. It's just like, whoa, Harvard, man. So who debates better, would you say, in different countries? What would you say is the, uh, the, the people that are really shining? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, I don't know if there's a single place, but I think uh, you know, the different, uh, different countries have different formats of debate that they specialize in. And so the kind that I um, work most with in the United States, it's called policy debate. Um, it's based on an announced topic and it's heavily research focused. There are other uh, more introductory formats for younger students in the U.S. One, it, the most popular one is now called public forum debate. It's growing around the world. And then, of course, in many countries, uh, the style is known as parliamentary debate. And uh, it's a little different because uh, you don't have a prepared or an announced topic in advance, and so the debaters have to debate on the fly. And so different areas of the world have different specializations, and so it kind of depends on what you're doing. But the kind that I'm you know, most experienced at and what I value most is when we have an announced topic and both sides get to prepare in depth about the points that they're going to make. And so I think that's, that's the best one. One of my favorite uh, sayings is from uh, Dr. Henrik Clark, mm -hmm. and he done a debate in, in the U.S. years ago. And he started off the debate was like, I only debate with my equals, all others <laughs> I teach. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. And from there, it was just like, whoa, 
okay, we're in for something big here. <laughs> so, Dr. Tripp, since you are focusing on youth, I mean, I've got a six-year-old and a nine-year-old at home, and obviously I stress out because I'm worried about how they deal with bullies and how they deal with people who are, I don't know, when they get, 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 into, get into fights. And I'm always like, don't use your words, not your fists. Just, <laughs> you know, idealistically uh, thinking as a mom. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm being naive or what kind of advice you give them when it comes to debate. How do you, how do you empower them with words? Um, well, I think hmm, a lot of it has to do with the competitive aspect of debate. So students really gravitate towards the ability to channel uh, the desire for competition and the desire to win in an argument. And so you can take a situation where you might be feeling nervous or you might be uh, experiencing conflict with somebody else, but the skills that you learn in debate can teach you how to handle that and there's an incentive. The better you get, the more you are able to use your words effectively the further you can go. I want to piggyback off of that a little bit. I want to know how can you make a compelling argument because sometimes you can show passion but you can come across as a little bit emotional. So how do you make a compelling argument where you seem passionate at the same time not too emotional? Uh, Asking for a friend. Oh, that's a, <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good question. I, part of me wants to say, those are inseparable. We have a phrase, style and substance are inseparable, and especially the way that the audience receives it. Um, but I think probably the most helpful piece of advice is just to know your subject matter. Mm -hmm. And the more you know, the more prepared you are, the more you've anticipated what objections are, the more you've thought about how you will respond to those, that will make sure that the content that you include in your speech and convey is uh, precise and speaks to the issue and can be as compelling as possible. By the way, this started about the youth, and now it's just us. Being free. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. Well, I think um, a lot of you know we live in a multicultural society here in Dubai, and a lot of people have thick accents, or various accents. There's not one standardized type of English here, mm -hmm. and so many people feel insecure about that. In the debate where the pros are now competing, does accent matter? Um, no, I don't think so. I think there are a number of ways in which uh, judges are accustomed to listening as hard as they can, at least in the formats that we practice. And so accents um, are usually not insurmountable at all. And sometimes they make the speaker memorable. Ah. Um, the accent is something that the audience can really gravitate to, either connect with, because they say, oh, I speak in a similar fashion, or um, it just sounds, <coughs> it sounds uh, fascinating and new and can capture the attention of the audience. And so we really don't think um, accents are anything to worry about. And sometimes you can lean in and embrace it, and it can make you a, a more persuasive speaker. Dr. Chip, how long are you in town for? Uh, I'm here for a week through through next Tuesday. We're doing uh, a workshop for students over the next three days, Thursday through Sunday. We're very excited about that. We'll start out with some public speaking, mm -hmm. get the students warmed up, and then we'll spend three days uh, debating. Actually, the topic we're going to debate is about universal basic income. And so we'll have both right. middle school students and high school students. The high school students may be uh, debating at a little bit more advanced, higher level, but uh, the topic is one that you know, any student, no matter what age they are, can engage and sort of be excited about. And so we're looking forward to that and hope to be back in the future as well. I know it's, it's very hot right now in June, so hope to be back uh, in the winter time to do future workshops. That's one of, one of the projects that I've been most excited about um, since I've been in this position is expanding opportunities for debate to students around the world. Um, we think, as we said, starting early is really important, but in many places there's not a culture of debate. Um, and so what we're really interested in doing is helping establish those cultures, really encouraging students to participate. And once it scales up, the more people that participate, the more exciting it can be, the more opportunities students have to engage with um, students either in their country or internationally. So we, we host um, in February every year uh, the largest invitational debate tournament in the world that has students from all over, you know, all over mm. the countries. And so... Um, Late ones to join. Well, good luck with the workshop, Dr. Tripp, and thank you so much for taking the time out for us today. It was a pleasure. Well, I'm very excited to be here, and I hope to see many of your children in, in future debate workshops, or if not ours, I hope they get started on debate early. That'll Absolutely. Really now, Lane, I believe you have our DX Green 60 quiz for Sana. I do, I do. Super Sana, as you can see, it goes really quick, right? We're at, almost at the end of the show, but before, we want to know a little bit more about you. Okay. In 60 <laughs> seconds. So yeah. uh, you don't, one word answers is great, but you don't have to. Uh, but we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. Start I'm feeling start. nervous yeah. now. <laughs> good, good, good. Three, two, one, and let's go. Now, if you weren't in public speaking, what would you be doing? Yellow oh, sun, oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'll be a full-time mom. Oh, <laughs> nice one. Uh, your number one tip for public speaking. 
Record yourself, record yourself, record yourself, and watch yourself back. Nice. A podcast recommendation. Stephen Bartlett's Diary of a CEO. Mm -hmm. He was just here with us. Ah. <laughs> uh, your motto in life and work? Wherever you go, go with all your heart. Nice. Mm. What was your first job? Mm, uh, waitress. Easy. I was 14. Summer internship. Nice. <laughs> waitress. <laughs> <laughs> in a Sweden. A superpower that you wish you had? Uh, superpower. I already feel like I have it. My heart feeling everything wholeheartedly. Fantastic. Mm. Uh, you said a waitress, so what's your go-to restaurant in Dubai? Mm, a delivery coming <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> a tip to prepare yourself before presentations? Uh, rehearse, write it down, structure it, think of your key messages. It's a, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. do the work, okay. please. <laughs> All right, yeah. One last one. Last one. Uh, why Dubai? Uh, it's unbelievable. It's magic on earth. Thank well, you, thank you so much, Sana. You have been fantastic. Thank and you. Dr. Tripp, I mean, I think we're really biased here. This, this episode has been great for us. So thank you so much for joining us. Now we're going to take a quick break, but don't you and our viewers go anywhere because we have the social pact closing out the night and it is going to be a fantastic performance. See you in a sec.